Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about exponential growth. So exponential growth and decay occurs when the growth rate of the value of a mathematical function is proportional to the current function's value. In this case, we're talking specifically about exponential growth. So when we are going to take the current value and then multiply it over and over by the same number, depending on what uh, happens, right? Heck, hence exponential. So one example of this is bacterial growth, okay? It grows exponentially or, you know, reproduction of mice, you know, they grow exponentially very quickly. So for example, here we have N of T, which is the number at time T. So how many bacteria do we have at time T, whatever T is set to? Uh, n naught is the initial number at time zero. So how many bacteria do we start with before we start the experiment? Uh, t is the length of time that has passed, right? Because the, um, the, number, uh, the number that we're going to have is going to depend on how much time has passed. If more time has passed, then we will, we will have a larger number. If less time has passed, we'll have a lesser number. And then we have D, which is the doubling time. So this just basically means how long does it take for the um, for the, the bacteria to double, right? Let's say that it doubles every one minute, then D is one. What if it doubles every five minutes, then D is five. Also, I should mention that T also would have to be in minutes then. Uh, they both have to be the same unit, of course. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's go for an example here. It says a strain of bacteria doubles every 10 minutes. Suppose we start with 50 bacteria. How many bacteria are there after two hours? Okay, so two hours, first of all, is equal to 120 minutes, right? So we have to make sure that because it doubles every 10 minutes that we either switch these both to hours. So we could say that 10 minutes is one sixth of an hour or we could say that two hours is the same as 120 minutes. I would much prefer to say that two hours and was 120 minutes so that we're not dealing with fractions or decimals. Uh, however, you can do it either way and that will give you a correct answer either way that you do it. As long as both are the same units, that's what matters. Both times are the same units, D and T. Okay, so let's answer this one. We want to know how many bacteria are there after 120 minutes. So what we're looking for is n of t, or in this case, n of 120, right? Because n of t is going to be different things when we change t. Uh, suppose we start with 50 bacteria. So that means there's 50 bacteria at time zero. So that's n naught. Uh, the length of time that has passed. Um, well, 120, of course, we already talked about that. And the doubling time, well, it takes 10 minutes for it to double. So therefore, if it takes 10 minutes to double, in 120 minutes, it's going to have doubled 12 times, not 120 times, because it only doubles once after every 10 minutes. So basically, they're saying, okay, per 10 minutes, how many minutes do we have? And it's like, well, we have, we have 12 10-minute periods in 120 minutes. Uh, okay, so now let's, uh, let's solve this. Let's see. So this is equal to 50 times 2 to the power of 12. And let's find, figure this out. What is 2 to the power of 12? 2 to the power of 12 is 4,096. Okay, so that's 50 times 4,096 times 50 is 204. Oh. 204,800. So therefore, there are 204,800 bacteria after two hours, or we could say 120 minutes, doesn't matter at this point for our conclusion statement. But there we go. There we go. Uh, here's another example. A strain of bacteria doubles after every 20 minutes. Suppose we start with 100 bacteria. How many bacteria are there after six hours? 
So same thing as before, we have it doubles every 20 minutes and they'd like to know after six hours. So what I need to know is how many 20 minute periods are in six hours? Well, if we think about it, in one hour, there's three 20 minute periods, right? Uh, and so with six hours, there'd be six times as many. So 18 likely, uh, but let's see. So six hours is equal to how many minutes? 360 minutes. And when we do divide that by 20, we'll get 18. So therefore it's going to double 18 times, but I guess we'll get to that later. Okay, so let's do N of 360 is equal to 100, because this time we're starting with 100 bacteria, and then two because we're doubling, and then it's gonna be 360 over 20, because 360 is the time in minutes that we're using, and 20 is the number of uh, the doubling time, right? Every 20 minutes, it doubles, right? After 20 minutes, this two takes effect again another time, right? Okay, so this is equal to 100 times two to the power of 18, which what is that? What's two to the power of 18? Two to the power of is 262,144, okay, so that's a pretty big number. But I mean, then again, doubling is pretty powerful. And so there is our answer. Looks like it's 26,214,400. So therefore, after six hours, there are two six two one four four hundred bacteria awesome okay all right well let's move on to a new type of problem which is the financial problem so sometimes money increases in value especially if we make investments our goal is that the money will increase in value on average a certain amount or maybe we put some money in a high interest savings account and the, the bank says uh, every year we'll pay you four percent or five percent uh, actually that'd be a pretty good deal if they paid five percent they probably don't really but if they paid five percent uh, a year in interest to us just for keeping our money in the bank and having a very low risk investment right so let's talk about that here so A is the current or future value, and P is the initial or current value. And people often get confused by this because they say, oh, but A could be the current value, and P could also be the current value, so which is it? Well, the thing is, there's two types of questions that we'll get generally. We might be asked, okay, here's the initial value that it was 10 years ago. How much is it worth today currently in the present, right? Um, or we might be asked, okay, we're today, currently, our current value is we're paying this much money for it. How much will it be in the future, right? So we just have to know which combination it is, right? Perhaps the value 10 years ago was some value and we want to know the current value now, right? Or these two also, they go together in the same question. Maybe we bought something today and in 10 years it grows. So it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective of, but if it is the same question. It's essentially saying, well, let's say we bought something 10 years ago. How much is it worth today 10 years later? Or let's say we bought something today. How much will it be worth 10 years down the road? So either way, same question. It just depends on is now the time that we bought it or is now the time that we've waited all these years and now we're cashing out, right? And so, so that's why. But that can be a confusing concept. So just depending on which type it is to uh, cross out the other ones and only focus on those there, because it's true that A can be the current value in the event that the current day is the day we're, we're cashing out and we're wanting to know how much it is now, or it can be future value in the event that perhaps we just got the investments day or some time ago and we want to know after you know this much time, what can we expect down the road? Uh, all right. Then we have I, which is the percent increase as a decimal, and this is per year specifically, right? When we talk about interest rates, it's interest per year, even if the interest is compounded monthly. For example, they're still talking about interest per year. When you hear, oh, uh, this credit card is 18%, well, typically that they mean what they mean by that is it's 18% per year 
compounded monthly. So you do get charged that interest monthly if you have a balance. However, uh, it is only going to be that much yearly, right? Or if the car interest rate for some car payment is, uh, I don't know, 8%, you know, even though the car payment is every year, that they're talking about that as an annual um, an annual rate typically. So typically when we hear interest rate, that's per year usually. Or, oh, we get a 7% return on uh, the S&P 500. That's talking about per on average per year, for example. I don't know what it's really average, but that's just an example there. Uh, okay, then we have N, which is specifically number of years, because again, the interest rate is applied every year, so that it has to be consistent with that. Okay, so let's talk about this example here. It says a coin collection was valued at 1500 in 1999. Each year it increases in value by 8%. What is its current value? Uh, okay, so let's think about this. What kind of question is it? Is it a question where we bought something today and we want to know in some number of years how much will it be worth? Or is it a question where we bought something years and years ago when we were very young and perhaps now we would like to know what's it worth today? And the answer is it's a second type of question, right? It's we, we bought something previously, we want to know what is it worth currently today. So therefore, we're going to be using current and initial, not future, right? We don't care about what's happening in the future. We we, want, we, we know what's happened in the past. We want to know how much is the coin collection worth now if you were to try to sell it. Uh, okay. And today, uh, I don't know when, when people are watching the video, but right now today it is 2023. So I'm going to use 2023 as my, um, as my current year. So therefore, it has been 24 years. So N number of years would be 24 years. Now, if you're doing this in the future or in the past, then perhaps N would be different. So actually this question is subjective because depending which year you're in, you're gonna put a different, <laughs> a different value for N. So that's gonna be interesting. The I for interest rate is 8% or 0 0.08. Uh, then we have A, which is the uh, current or future value. In this case, the current value. Well, that's the question. That is what we are trying to figure out. So we don't know the answer yet. And then uh, P is the initial value, which was 1500 So we paid $1,500 for it back in 1999, if, if we were even alive then. And we, um, we 24 years later, would like to know, well, how much is this worth now that it was valued at this point, you know, at, at this value in 1999? Uh, okay, so let's do it. So A, we don't know. P is 1500 as we said. 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of n, which is 24, like that. 1.08 to the power of 24. And the reason it's plus 1 there is because the 1 is just holding the initial value, right? It's saying it's going to be not just times 0 0.8, but times 1.08, because not only is it holding its initial value, but it's gaining an extra 8% on top of the 100% that it already is at. Whereas if we did 0. 8 or sorry 0 0.08 that would mean that it lost the rest of its value that now it's only worth 8% of what it used to be worth which isn't the case it's worth 8% more than what it was worth every single year okay so 1.08 to the power of 24 times 1500 is nine thousand five hundred and eleven dollars and seventy seven cents so that's our answer so that's a lot of money it, it gained a lot of money since 1999 so we're, we're probably pretty happy about that that said eight percent a year is a pretty decent return and also 24 years is quite a long time so it's not really surprising and also this is compounded interest as well as something i should i should point out so every year it gains more than it gained the last year because it gains on not only that original 1500 but it gains on whatever amount it was you know the previous year so the first year it gains eight percent the next year it gains 8% of that new number, which is larger than 1,500. Then it gains 8% on the next new number and so on, right? And so it just keeps, it gains faster and faster as time goes on, right? Uh, good. Okay. The next one says a stamp collection is currently worth uh, $750. 
what is the purchase price in 2001 if the collection has increased in value by 4.3% each year since its purchase? Okay, so again, I'm going to assume that it is 2023 because it is 2023. So therefore, the number of years would be 22 years since 2001. Um, I is 4.3%. So 0 0.043, if we put that in decimal form, uh, it is currently worth $750. Uh, so let's see, and what was the question? The question is what the purchase price was. Ah, so they want to know the initial price. They want to know P this time. And A is 750 now, how do we know that? Well, because they're asking us what the original price was all those years ago, if today it's worth this. They're not saying today it's worth this, and we would like to know how much is it worth in the future, and, you know, in 10 more years, how much will it be worth? No, they are asking us uh, how much was it worth back then. Now, if they swap the question around and they said, uh, how much will it increase in 10 more years, then 750 would actually be P, because we'd be wanting to know the future value from the value now, but instead we know the value now and we want to know what was the value back, you know, 22 years ago. So do keep that in mind as well um, with this kind of question. Okay, and keep in mind too, so if it was, if it's only worth 750 now, it's valued at much less than the coin collection from earlier, and we're expecting it to be worth even less in 2001 because it has gained 4.3% um, each year since it was purchased 22 years ago. So we're expecting that this stamp collection is not going to be worth very much in 2001. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what our answer is. Uh, A, which is 750, equals P. Power of 22. There we go. Okay. So therefore, 750 equals P 1.043 to the power of 22. So therefore, we have 2.525P equals 750. So 750 divided by 2.525. So P is equal to $297.03. So we might say, oh, but that's not very much. Well, that's true. That really, that's not, that's a lot less than the 750. But again, 22 years, it's a very long time. And the interest, the interest isn't as high on this one either, right? Although if the interest was higher, it'd be even lesser, be, you know, the original value, because it would have gained more value from that original. But, but yes, it's, I mean, it's less than half of, of what it is worth today because of all those years of compounding the interest. So therefore, actually, I didn't write a conclusion statement for over here, uh, but I perhaps I should have. I wrote conclusion statements here. Uh, let's write a conclusion here, which is that uh, the value in 2001 was $297.03. Oh, and then over here, we'll write that the current value is... 9511.77. Awesome. All right. Well, that is everything for exponential growth for right now. Next time we will talk about exponential decay, which is very similar, but has a slight difference to it. But good work today, and I will see everybody next time. Bye for now.